This is a, a really exciting uh, presentation that we're going to give to you because the MOVE program used to be just on the East Coast, but now we're expanding to the West Coast and beyond. So the MOVE uh, provides a, a vital service to emergency responders and public in the early phases of a disaster. So right now we are uh, deployed uh, with uh, as a teammate of the National Red Cross and working with the Red Cross, we provide the IT communication solutions that allow them to connect up to their headquarters and then to uh, uh, manage their resources during the disaster. Um, so right now uh, we, we have power, IP phones, internet access, and we can generally be up and running within 10 minutes. And then when the system is not deployed, we can use the platform for community uh, STEM education and public visibility uh, events. So MOVE is really uh, uh, recognized in the IEEE as a key program. Uh, we are a vehicle that allows uh, IEEE members who have a passion to provide disaster relief with emergency communications and power. And right now, as I mentioned, we are uh, MOVE in the USA. I'll explain more on that in a couple of slides, but now MOVE is going international. We have two efforts that are in the early stages, uh, which is looking at expanding MOVE into the Caribbean islands and as well as a little bit further down the pike, uh, looking at expansion in Asia in a country like India. So uh, we have now gotten some funding through the NIC committee, the new initiative committee to help us to uh, bring up the inter international uh, program. So let me, hopefully this works. I will play this video, which is a really nice video. Crystal, we need you in the move truck. Copy that, I'll be right in. Communication is everything when a natural disaster strikes. Wildfires, flash flooding, and mudslides. We could see it all during monsoon. And now, for the first time, this move truck is ready to roll to the rescue to bring power and communication to the community. That's right, Crystal. IEEE is an organization based on engineers. After Hurricane Katrina and Superstorm Sandy, we were looking for ways for our engineering organization to help at disasters and everybody said that their power was out crystal we need you in the move truck copy that i'll be right in communication is everything when a natural disaster you can start it again I... wildfires flash flooding and mudslides we could see it all crystal we need you in the move truck copy that i'll be right in Communication is everything when a natural disaster strikes. Wildfires, flash flooding, and mudslides. We could see it all during monsoon. And now, for the first time, this move truck is ready to roll to the rescue to bring power and communication to the community. That's right, Crystal. IEEE is an organization based on engineers. After Hurricane Katrina and Superstorm Sandy, we were looking for ways for our engineering organization to help at disasters and everybody said that their power was out and they had no way to communicate so this truck was designed around power and communications let me show you what we have here we have satellite equipment here this connects to the big dish on the top of the truck we can get internet where there isn't any cable or any internet available uh, we have satellite TV so we can track the, the weather and the news uh, while we're on site we have solar panels charge controllers and we have some networking equipment uh, to allow us to feed all the information on the ground through our satellite here is our charging station you have your phone yeah, yeah. they hook up emergency responders first and once they're good to go then they plug in people in shelters and elsewhere who need a charge to reach loved ones and other important contacts and we can do a hundred of those uh, while we're on site we also have a series of radios on this truck. We actually have the capability to talk to police, fire, emergency management uh, on this radio. We could communicate with anybody worldwide. Why did you take the call to volunteer? I was a volunteer fireman for many years. This was a way for me to get back into the assisting a, at a disaster. So where does the road take this truck when there's no SOS? We go to a lot of schools and universities and talk about technology and how we uh, use technology to solve problems at disasters. So it's it's really exciting to work with the students and to get the students excited about technology.
Okay, I think I'm done. <laughs> so that, that, that's really a great video. Uh, this is what you'll see uh, when you go out uh, to see the truck. But let's go over some of the recent history uh, that the MOVE uh, uh, program has uh, done in the last number of years. Here's a chart of some of the deployments uh, uh, dating back to 2016 through 17, 18, and now into 2022. So as you can see, uh, most of the earlier ones are in the uh, eastern part of the United States. And only now are we beginning to have this capability on the West Coast. So this is really exciting. And right now, I'll, I'll just flash through some of the some of the scenes of, of, of where the move truck, the original one, uh, was deployed in the fall of 2021, uh, Louisiana after uh, that disaster. Um, uh, later, uh, uh, I'll, I'll bring up Kathy, Kathy Hashi, who is the region director elect for region six she was actually at that deployment. So she can give you firsthand experience. You can talk to her later uh, when we were out at the move truck. So, so uh, from, from what uh, 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 the volunteers have, have told me is that it's a life-changing experience to go through and see this type of destruction and to become part of the solution in order to help people. And, uh, and this is why we become entrepreneur volunteers. So right now we do serve a community in STEM uh, uh, in the truck, there are educational material, there's material for children, so that they tell them how the move truck works, what it can do, coloring books, many things that can help to maybe spark that first interest of, uh, the, for, for, for young kids in order to figure out what technology can do uh, uh, for, for making people's lives better. So in 2021, uh, you can see some, some of the states that uh, move are covered uh, 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 in, in, in that period. Then in 2022, we took ownership of a second truck. And this allow us now to have uh, two areas of coverage, the east, Eastern Seaboard and as well as the West. So uh, we decided to move uh, the original move truck we call Move One from, from Raleigh all the way to San Diego with a number of stops. The new truck that we did get got refitted and that's gonna remain on the East Coast. And so we made many stops. Each stop, we try to uh, connect with an IEEP section or university that uh, allow us to tell us our story and then to get more uh, people involved. And on the truck, which, you, which is the move one, which is now on the West Coast and move two is on the East Coast, has many of this equipment shown here, including uh, a solar power for power generation. It's got a big diesel generator. It's got lots of equipments of uh, communication and IT switches and so forth. And then there, uh, there's room for a uh, workspace as well. So in this uh, 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 you know, scenario, what we went when we said, let's come out to the West Coast. We wanted to build a new team of people that are based in the West Coast so they can be closer to where the truck is and where they need to be deployed. So we went through and did a lot of surveys. We identified people that have interests and part of what, what we're talking to you about today is actually uh, talk to all of you that if you want to become a volunteer, become part of this program, uh, we are certainly uh, 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 want to talk to you about that. So there are many different parts of the MOVE program. There are many committees, some of which then are the actual drivers and operators of the equipment, and you'll meet some of them later this afternoon, and some of them are remote. They can work things on the radio, radio club, maintenance, networking, weather, training, uh, STEM education. So all those can be done, uh, you know, you could be uh, uh, in any city uh, and, and still uh, participate in helping uh, the MOVE operation. We do need the uh, uh, volunteers to have uh, Red Cross training and to be certified. So we have an extensive uh, uh, checklist where once you sign up, you can work with us to get the training and then to be connected with the Red Cross and get uh, certified so that uh, in the same way that all Red Cross volunteers have to be certified. So uh, right now, uh, in the earlier part of Q2, we were, uh, once we made our move to uh, San Diego, we hosted a couple of events, including the first one was the, the Qualcomm Evening of Innovation. Uh, you can see the truck there in front of Qualcomm. And then we were also at the uh, IEEE Awards Ceremony, which was at the Marriott there. And so, so there we were able to display the truck uh, for all the IEEE board members. As, as I mentioned, we are starting to build a team. Uh, you will later this afternoon, when you go out to the truck, uh, meet Bill Torres, 
who's one of our first, uh, a volunteer driver who's fully trained and, and now capable of operating the truck. And then so, so, so and you see members of the San Diego section uh, as well, who are now becoming very active there. So uh, there we are. So right now, we now once we get enough volunteers um, identified, then we have uh, a training program, some of which is located at the Red Cross Center. Some of the course material can be virtual. So right now, here's some pictures we're showing in May. We started having some um, meet, meet um, uh, greet meetings with the Red Cross and set up training. And you can see some of the people uh, that, uh, that uh, right now uh, were participating in those training sessions. So, so as I mentioned, Bill and Andy are here, and then Kathy over there is right now. Uh, right now, these are all trained people that can operate Move One uh, on the West Coast. And so right now we have uh, six drivers that we continue to want to fill out the rest of the team. And there are many, many different roles that you can fill. So uh, uh, we, as, as the truck moved across the country, we made stops, for example, at the PES conference uh, in July uh, in Denver. And so wherever we can, we make, we make use of the opportunity uh, in order to interact with different parts of the IEEE. So, so you can see on the right-hand side, there's a simulation of the Red Cross in preparation of a real deployment. And later, um, a Kathy will describe, this is, you know, having these kind of drills is important because get, to get everybody to go from book knowledge into practice. And there's a lot of things that if you don't go through it once, then, it, it, you know, it's, it's not hard, but you have to have to go through that experience. So this is the MOVE truck. Uh, the latest deployment of MOVE uh, uh, was actually in August of, uh, in Kentucky after the big uh, floods. Uh, you can see that uh, that truck went out there and, and, and were called up by the Red Cross and, and they made actually a very big um, uh, you know, uh, impact on what the Red Cross can do for that disaster relief for the flooding. So right now, uh, Kathy will describe this later. Let me have her describe to you. Uh, this is the, the after the first, I believe, the first deployment of the move truck on the West Coast. All right. So um, what he was telling you about was getting the, the move um, the move vehicle over from uh, the East Coast and over to the West Coast. And as you can see, there was quite a bit that went into that. And last week, last Thursday, um, Bill Torrey, who's right back there. Um, hi, Bill. Yeah, he got the call. He got the call from the San Diego Red Cross around 6.30 in the morning. And there was a fire just in Pine Valley. And it grown from hundreds of acres to thousands of acres in literally hours. And so they called Bill and said, we need the move truck. And they needed a move truck because they were setting up a facility at a local high school, which had no internet, the fiber had already melted, so they did not have internet, and they needed to get the Red Cross out there, they needed their laptops, and they didn't have any communications at all. And they couldn't even bring their laptops until they had some way to access the internet. So they called for the moon truck, and because of those things that you had seen before, is that we have had discussions with the Red Cross prior to this, we had had simulations, we had gone out on community events because we wanted to do is to make sure that these drivers were trained. Uh, we had week and a half long trainings in San Diego, uh, getting all, all our drivers ready to roll. We had simulations with the Red Cross. They had gone out to community events, and not just for the community events in the South, which is amazing in itself, but also to make sure they knew how to drive the truck, they knew how to fill up the gas and where to fill up the gas, and all those details that you need when you deploy out this truck. So Thursday at 6.30 in the morning, we were ready. Um, by 11 o'clock, I was sitting at the Red Cross um, waiting for Bill, and Bill and um, Bill and I did the checklist, and we were ready to roll right around there. And then we had a couple hours, we drove out to Pine Valley. We set up the secure internet for first responders, and we set up the Red Cross so that they could now hook up their laptops and they could successfully connect so that they could um, work with the hundreds that were in the high school. There was 1,500 people all together that had, had been um, told that they needed to leave their, their homes. And over 100 were at the high school that night. And the moon truck was there. And Bill Torrey stayed overnight in the pot inside the truck. And we stayed there until they, they were done and they didn't, they had their last operations meeting and didn't need the moon truck. 
And that's the impact. And this is what engineering technology and humanity together. We were there setting up graph networks. We were setting up, we we're watching latency. We were seeing um, you know, some of those graphs and charts that you saw. This is where uh, technology meets humanity. We were at that Red Cross shelter. And we're engineers, we're saying, okay, we've got to put this up here and we're connecting, doing what we do. In fact, during the course, we set up the community uh, networks as well. And they needed that community. The community needed to now fill out forms. They needed to talk to their insurance companies. They needed to reach out to families who were wondering what was happening. These are all the things that, um, that we helped enable in that situation. So um, I'm very proud of our new team is Andy Morwood and Bill Ford, can you please stand up? Um, they drove this uh, vehicle from San Diego. Thank you so much. And when afterwards, um, when you walk out to the parking lot, you can meet them and talk to them about the equipment and a little bit about the impact that we are having as an IEEE organization with our local Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Kathy, Kank, Bill, and Andy. So uh, try to wrap this up. So right now, some of the events that we're looking for uh, uh, coming up very soon uh, includes uh, uh, being at Rising Stars, the 2023, uh, early January in Las Vegas, and then at IMS International Micro Symposium 2023 in San Diego. Um, uh, uh, so right now, there's going to be a whole lot more things that we can do. But the more folks we can get engaged on the West Coast, the more things that we can do, uh, you know, uh, in terms of not just in San Diego, but we start developing a team of people uh, in, uh, in, in the middle of California and maybe all the way up to Seattle. There are other things that we can do to figure out whether the truck should stay down south or can be uh, moved to wherever it is in the season of the year where, where we can uh, be closer to where, uh, where it's needed. So right now, where we, we want to look for volunteers. So right now, just to go to our website, uh, which is uh, USA, uh, 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 I think uh, the move uh, a web page, and you can sign up there, show interest, and somebody will contact you. So we have a number of sponsors uh, from different uh, organization units of IEEE that are shown here, and also some corporations. And so right now, and, and, and then uh, technical societies like Power Energy, uh, reliability and computer society and region level, region three, region six. So we're trying to get many different parts of IEEE involved. And, and so if you're a member of any of these groups or, or not, uh, come talk to us, okay? And so the quote that uh, Mary Ellen uh, uh, Randall, who is really the founder of this program, likes to quote is that, you know, from uh, Maya uh, uh, Angelo, who is a you know, well-known poet and, and author saying, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And so this is kind of what we took to heart is that let's serve people first. And then we don't care whether they recognize us or not, but the fact that we did something and, and that we did it in the name of humanity. So, so right now, what we have is a timeline. We continue to work on a, a plan of moving forward. I can see here uh, we have communication events, including fireside chats, uh, outreach events like Rising Stars, uh, VILC, and then building up each one of those teams you see there uh, that right now needs a lot of work. Uh, uh, so all this requires money. It's not, a, it, there's a lot of expenses. And so this is something that uh, if you've got some ideas of individuals and or corporations that you think could become a donor or become a sponsor, come talk to us and we would like to make those connections. Um, so I think that that's about it. Uh, uh, nothing too new here and, and, and that's it. So right now I'd like to, uh, to uh, close this um, uh, presentation. And, and this time um, uh, what we're gonna be doing is then uh, uh, going out to um, uh, the, uh, what, what, what's the name of the lot? Yeah, so I think we can probably, you know, go out and mass if you like and just follow uh, some of the leaders, just see the two drivers and then come out and take a look. I know it's, a, it's parallel to some of the technical sessions. So, so during the next two hours, they have till three huh? They have till three okay, uh, let's do that. And then, and then you can see it uh, firsthand. Here's a question. One, one more thing. As they say in product presentations, and one more thing. <laughs> 
Hi, I'm Dave Snyder from the Consultants Network of Silicon Valley, helped sponsor the event here and, and helped sponsor moving the truck up here, which costs a lot of gas money. We are having a session tonight, at seven o'clock in this room. Uh, if you pre registered, you may have seen in the uh, website how to pre register for this event. We're going to have some pizza over there. If you didn't pre register, we may not have enough food, but I still invite you to come to the seven o'clock presentation in this room. And uh, we have not only uh, Bill, the driver from the, the truck uh, on the panel, uh, but also uh, people from some other organizations. Uh, the Paul, who uh, brought the uh, solar panel uh, 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 trailer. Uh, Dave Crocker from our local Red Cross. Uh, also, I triple 